It might seem antiquated, but this really was a great British machine. Boiler pressures of 255 pounds per square inch, the same or even more than a steam loco, meant these steam wagons generated five times as much power as the petrol lorries of the day, making them very much the workhorses of choice for the construction industry. Driving a steam wagon is a tad different to driving a car. For a start, you've got a baking hot fire in the cab with you, heating the water to a staggering 165 degrees Celsius, a fire you've got to keep going by shoveling coal into the boiler here via the stoke chute at the top. Now, given that steering and shoveling coal is a bit tricky to do at the same time, steam wagons were most definitely a two-man operation. This is my stoker, Jim Sarney. When these wagons were used commercially, they covered hundreds of miles, even hundreds of miles in a day sometimes. And it, you know, a fireman was essential. So basically, the fireman, is, his job is to stoke the boiler and keep, keep pressure up. That, that's his main job. It might seem a bit primitive, but believe me, these things go like stink. So, Jim, this wagon will be good for 50 mile an hour? Oh, yeah, yeah. When these wagons were built, they, there was nothing to touch them. Nothing to touch them for speed, nothing to touch them for power. These massive haulage machines don't just run on coal. They need water, too, to make their steam and can only carry enough for 30 miles. So, what did the steam wagons do when they needed to fill up? They couldn't just pull up at a petrol station. No, it was much more fun than that. They simply kept an eye out for ponds and streams as they went along, and if they couldn't see any of those, simply borrowed it from whatever they could find. Fire hydrants, or even animal troughs. So, here we are. A horse trough full of water. Now to deploy the steam wagon's water borrowing device. And here it is essentially a hose with a filter on the end to keep out sticks and fish and the like. Now, using the wagon's steam power, the hose essentially sucks up the water into the tank. Take it away, Jim. A 1,054 water-sucking, smoke-belching sentinels were made in the 30s, with some adapted for all manner of roles, including road building. Well, flatbeds like this one would have simply carried the construction materials to the site. But there were other, much more specialised sentinels out there. Like this wonderful sentinel concrete mixer. A lot of 1930s roads were made of concrete, with the concrete poured into vast wooden frames. Frames like this, only bigger, where the concrete was smoothed over and left to set. On some 1930s sites, there would have been hundreds of these concrete squares, all joined one to another. Once the concrete had set, they pretty much had their road. However, concrete on its own is fairly slippy. <laughs> So, to help the cars get some grip, they often added one more ingredient. Tarred chippings. And that's where the specialist sentinels really came into their own. They made perfect tar transporters, as the heat from their steam boilers could be used to keep the tar melted. So, with your skid-proof surface applied, that was more or less it. One new 1930s road, simple as that. <laughs> 